For all who give you a face, Lord Jesus, by spreading your love in the world, we praise you. For all who give you hands, by doing their best toward their sisters and brothers, we praise you. For all who give you a mouth, Lord Jesus, by defending the weak and the oppressed, we praise you. For all who give you eyes, by seeing every bit of love in the heart of man and woman, we praise you. For all who give you a heart, Lord Jesus, by preferring the poor to the rich, the weak to the strong, we praise you. For all who give you your poverty, the look of hope for your reign, we praise you. For all who reveal you simply by what you are, by what they are, Lord Jesus, because they reflect your beauty in their lives, we praise you. You who are the God of a thousand faces, yet whom nothing can reveal completely except the face of the child of Bethlehem, we praise you. Continue in our lives the mystery of Christmas. Let your Son become flesh in us, so that we may be, for all our brothers and sisters, the revelation of your love. the time in our service where we will join together in the spirit of prayer. Will you please humble your heart with me as we come before God. Gracious and loving Lord, we thank you so much for this Christmas season, for the Advent candles that we were able to light, and most importantly, the Christ candle that represents your Son, God, your son who came to save us, who came as a boy in a manger, not as a king with a valiant army. God, we understand that you have ultimately humbled yourself, even though you never had to, because you are God. You still did. You still came in the most vulnerable state to show us that you love us and that you know what we're going through. God, for all of those who are struggling right now, I pray that you be with them, comfort them, and remind them that you know how they feel. God, for all of those who are sick, who are worried, who are feeling anxious or impatient or angry. Pray that you be with them, God, and give them your guidance as only you can. Pray that you put people into their lives who would reach out to them and encourage them and remind them that they are loved. For those who are feeling that they have people on their hearts right now, who may fit some of these situations, God, I pray that you encourage them to reach out. 
and remind those people that they are loved. God, I pray that we can be your hands and feet and not just rush through the end of 2020 to get to 2021. God, because we know it is just the turn of a page, that you have seen the beginning and the end of our lives. And God, you have a plan for us. May we step into that. May we be aware of every passing moment and each person that we encounter as an opportunity to share your love and your gospel, King Jesus. We pray for any unspoken prayer requests. God, we ask so much that you be with all of the things that fill our hearts every day, all of the people who cross our minds. Pray that you be with them and be with us. We pray for this church, for Community Christian, and for the congregation. We pray for the leadership and the staff. We pray for unity in these places so that we may move forward when we are clear to return together, stronger and more connected than before. We ask all of these in Jesus' name. Amen.
Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer, amen. The wait is over. This is probably true for a lot of us, right? All of the anticipation and lead up to Christmas, all of the gift wrapping and extra online ordering and mailing of cards and packages and the twinkly lights, all of it, it has come and it is over. The wait is over. This is the first Sunday after Christmas. The holiday that ended a horrible year. The holiday that should have restored joy. The holiday where we could say everything that had troubled us is in the rear view mirror. The holiday where we could gather with friends and family finally, safely. Where the virus was eradicated. Where 2020 was soon to be a memory. The wait is over. And we did everything right in the church year. And the church is back to normal. It's full. We're singing again. We're gathering. We're greeting one another. We're hugging. The wait is over. Everything we hoped for and longed for, it's come to be, right? The wait is over. We celebrate this scripture. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. The glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. It's over. And everything came to pass as we hoped, right? The prophecy has come. This is the holiest time in our church. It's the happiest time of year. The Christmas season is filled with joy. The holy season of Christmas filled with prophecy. It has arrived. Everything we've been waiting for is here, right? Well, not exactly. All the anticipation and hope that we pour into Christmas, knowing that we'd finally find peace and healing, we'd restore our old ways, that all of the waiting and the preparing would be worth it, knowing that we would receive exactly what we wanted for Christmas, which was probably our old life back, right? The waiting is over. But then after Christmas, I don't know about you, but for me, there's always sort of a crash this year, especially. The wait is over and Christmas arrived, the prophecy fulfilled. And yet, we can look around and not that much has changed. The world is still as it once was, where restrictions are in place and people are getting sick, where the vaccine hasn't reached everyone, where church is still online, where we haven't been able to gather and hug one another and freely go out on the town without worrying about what's going to happen. The wait is over. Christmas has come. We've returned again to the good news that hope was born into the world, that Christ will redeem us all. But what does it feel like once the wait is over? Are you overjoyed at the memories and the fun from the holiday? Are you renewed in your faith after returning to one of our holiest days and tuning in here? Are we seeing an increase in, in church membership and involvement because of the power and the depth of what we've done in our online worship services? Why does it feel like once the waiting is over, when a prophecy is finally fulfilled, and yet, here we are. After the waiting is over, what's changed? Simeon and Anna. They are two faithful people that know a lot about waiting. Can you imagine being told that you will not see death before you have seen the Messiah? What kind of waiting that would bury deep in your soul every single day? If you were Simeon, would you wake up wondering, is today the day? Is today the day the Messiah will come? Is today the day that was promised? And Anna, she knows a lot about waiting as well. Can you imagine living with your husband only seven years? And then going on to live until the age of 84 every day, the same, fasting, praying, 
waiting, wondering, when will the Messiah come? How long will I, will I be alone in this faithful routine of waiting? This is the story for Simeon and Anna. Our scripture today brings us to the moment that Simeon and Anna were waiting for. Finally, the Messiah is brought into the temple. Finally, they catch a glimpse of the hope and the redemption that was promised to them. But what does it feel like when the waiting is over? When a prophecy finally arrives? What does it feel like in these days after Christmas when all of the celebration is complete? When our old routines of staying home and worrying about the virus creep back in? After a long season of waiting, why does it sometimes feel like a letdown when the wait is over, when a holiday has passed? In the scriptures today, Jesus is still in diapers. His parents are bringing this fussy, teething baby to the temple for a blessing. A baby dedication, it's a reverent moment in the midst of sleepless nights. On a first glance, this is the moment that the prophecy is fulfilled. But in reality, the moment from our scripture today was probably a moment of chaos for Mary and Joseph, exhausted by their new duties as parents. Exhausted by their new duties as parents, tired from the constant feeding, changing, holding, rocking, and singing to their new little addition. Mary and Joseph are so in the moment in this scripture, and it's a messy moment. Even Anna and Simeon who've waited, they can see the reality. They can see that Jesus is a teething, crying mess in diapers. They can see the exhaustion in the eyes of his parents and the weariness of the Holy Family. And yet, they rejoice. They rejoice because a prophecy is fulfilled. Jesus is not yet leading the nations. He's not healed anyone yet. He hasn't preached or spoken a word yet. He hasn't called the disciples yet. He hasn't begun his ministry, his teaching or his preaching. But that's not what a fulfilled prophecy is about anyway. Simeon, Simeon and Anna do not rejoice and praise because they can see everything that will happen in the life of Jesus, the Messiah. Instead, they rejoice and they praise God because they know deep down that God's promise has been fulfilled. And that's enough. We need Simeon and Anna today. We need them in our lives and as our teachers from the scriptures, especially in these moments when the wait is over and yet here we are. In these moments when Christmas has passed and all that we hoped for has already gone away, when the high holy time of the church is here and yet we're still virtually worshiping. We're not back in person. All of the joy that Christmas should have brought and still we're under COVID restrictions, we're wearing masks, and we're staying apart. We need Simeon and Anna today as teachers to remind us that prophecy is fulfilled when we know deep down that God's promise is here. We know deep down that a light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. We know that God showed up on Christmas and God continues to show up. We know that hope will cast out despair, that love will triumph over fear, and that even when we feel down, unlovable, or anxious, that God loves every one of us, that we are God's beloved. This is the truth of our gospel. This is the prophecy born with Christ in the manger that you know deep down in your very bones because God built this good news into you. The prophecy was fulfilled in Bethlehem and continues to be fulfilled each Christmas. Hope is alive. 
Love does conquer all. God is with us. And even if we can't fully see or experience what this means, what it might be like when the wait is over, when hope is restored in us, we do know that the Messiah has come. We do know that God's hope is at work. And knowing this is enough. Amen. This is an open table. This is God's table and it is open for you. Whether you believe a little or a lot, whether you belong to this church or no church at all, whether you've been baptized or not, you are welcome here because this is an open table. We remember with joy the grace by which you created all things and made us in your own image. We rejoice that you called a people in covenant to be a light to the nations yet we rebelled against your will. In spite of the prophets and the pastors sent forth to us, we continued to break your covenant. In the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to save us, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of your favored one, Mary. Sharing our life, he reconciled us to your love. At the Jordan, your Spirit descended upon him, anointing him to preach the good news of your reign. He healed the sick and fed the hungry, manifesting the power of your compassion. He sought out the lost and broke bread with sinners, witnessing the fullness of your grace. We beheld his glory. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room. He gathered and he took a loaf of bread. He blessed it and he said to them, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this and remember me. Likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Drink this and remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember the Lord Jesus until he returns. Will you join me in the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever, Amen. God bless.
and now receive this blessing. May the God who created you in the image of goodness, the Holy Spirit who breathed into you the breath of life, and Christ who went ahead of us all teaching us the way of love, send you into this day with peace. The wait is over. Amen.